This story is about peak oil and how it is not as bad as most people say it is. Good things will come out of it too. You just have to survive long enough to see them. But first of all, what is peak oil? It is the idea that there is a limit to how quickly we can pump oil out of the earth and that this limit is quickly approaching. It may already be here, and once something reaches its limit, there is only one way to go from there. <clears throat> um, down. What does all this mean? It means that it will get harder and harder to get oil out of the ground. We will get less and less oil for our efforts, and it will get more and more expensive to get the oil. This means that not only will the amount of oil we can buy decrease, but the oil we buy will go way up in price. But that's not all. Demand for oil all over the world is increasing, and as anyone who has taken an hour or two of economics class will tell you, increased demand means increased prices. But it's not over yet. Oil is the main source of cheap energy used around the world. When oil prices go up, other energy prices will go up too. Think of it this way. When oil is cheap, people selling other types of energy have to charge similar rates if they want to compete. Few people will pay $300 to ship something on an electric truck if they can pay $50 to ship it on a diesel truck. When oil prices make it cost $400 to use the diesel truck, the other guys will be able to charge $350. This will affect a lot more than you might think. Almost everything we do depends on cheap energy. The things we own were made from resources taken from places all over the world and shipped to other parts of the world to be made into cheap products we can buy in our part of the world. We then throw them away and ship the garbage to other parts of the world to dump on poor people. The materials used travel thousands of miles in just a few months thanks to cheap energy. Here's the breakdown of how peak oil will affect the prices of goods. Resources are ripped out of the ground using big machines and lots of cheap labor. These resources are processed by other big machines into a form that is usable and then shipped out on big ships to big factories where armies of little children and poor people use little machines to make little things for us to buy. But things have to get to us first, which means they get put on big ships and sent to our ports, where they get put on trucks and taken to get put on trains which take them to get put on trucks again and they get shipped to a big box store where we can buy a pencil sharpener for five cents. All of this costs money. Machines need oil for lubrication and for fuel. As energy costs go up, shipping and manufacturing costs go up until it doesn't matter how little you pay the children, you still can't afford to stay in business. So the big box stores are out of the picture. What does this mean? Well, since they've driven out just about everyone else, it means there will be no stuff for us to buy and nowhere to buy it. But it doesn't matter because you won't be able to afford to drive to the store to buy anything anyway. Now, you might be thinking, I thought he said good things would happen. Well, they will but only after the box stores and big factories die out and businesses stop murdering the land and its people because it's no longer profitable. With nowhere to shop and nowhere to drive, people will be forced to stay close to where they live. This means they will have to grow their own food and make their own clothes. People will have to do things on themselves. That's right. Self-reliance is the way to live through Armageddon. People will start to live in closer communities and learn to get along with each other. After a while, people will probably start specializing and we will have farmers, bakers, and tailors again, but it will all be on a small scale.